Hi all, uh, now we prove theorem 20. Uh, let g be uh, g f1 f takes at fr be linear functionals on a vector space v. So in order to get this g as a linear combination of this f1 f to fr, uh, we can get uh, we we have the characterization for this and uh, uh, contains the intersection of n1 n2 etc nr. That means this n is the null space of g and n1 n2 nr are the null spaces of uh, this uh, f1 f2 fr. Okay, so uh, we need to prove that this g is equal to c1 times f1 plus etc plus uh, cr times uh, nr cr times uh, fr uh, if and only if if and only if uh, this n contains that means n1 intersection n2 intersection etc intersection nr is contained in n okay so uh, this can be proved using uh, the one one part is very trivial. Uh, anyway, the, if this C, this uh, R is equal to one, then this res the result uh, is trivial because uh, this reduces to G is equal to C1 F1. If and only if this N1 is contained in uh, N1, uh, there is only one N1, then N1 is contained in N. So this is what we have proved in the lemma. So in the case of an R is equal to one is very trivial. So we, we will prove this the, uh, this uh, characterization using uh, mathematical induction on R. So uh, because this statement uh, is a statement of uh, R, so we can say that this uh, for R is equal to one, two, three, etc. We need to prove the statement for the positive integers. So uh, since this R is for for R is equal to one, we have the lemma. Then uh, it is easily. Uh, follow then uh, we assume that this r is uh, the result is true for uh, p of r is true for true for r is equal to 1 2 3 etc uh, k minus 1 and we'll prove this is true for r is equal to k so uh, we, have, we have assumed that p of r is equal to uh, p of r is true for uh, uh, all the integers uh, less than or equal to uh, this k. So we need to prove the statement p of k. Uh, p of k is g is equal to c1 f1 plus etc plus c k f k if and only if this n1 intersection n2 intersection etc intersection n k is contained in n. Okay. So uh, one part is very trivial. Uh, if you assume this, uh, we have n1 uh, intersection n2 intersection etc. nk uh, contained in n. This implies uh, if you uh, uh, if you assume this, uh, we will prove that this g is equal to c1 f1 plus etc. Uh, c k f k uh, implies this statement n1 intersection n2 intersection etc intersection nk first we have we can prove this this is very trivial uh, contained in n for this n1 n2 nk are the null spaces of f1 f2 etc k and n is the null space of g now uh, in order to prove this we choose an al alpha from n1 intersection etc intersection nk consequently f1 of alpha equal to f2 of alpha equal to etc equal to fk of alpha equal to 0 because uh, alpha belongs to each of these nis nis are the null spaces of f1 f2 etc or f twice so this this quantity is of 0 consequently uh, g of alpha equal to c1 times 0 plus etc cr ck times 0 that is equal to 0 so this is trivially true that means that this alpha belongs to n and is the null space of g so uh, when n is equal to uh, in the case when k uh, uh, r is equal to k, then one part is very trivial. The next, uh, then we it, it reminds to show that the next part. Uh, what is the next part? If we assume n one intersection, n two intersection, etc. Intersection n uh, k is contained in n. Then we will, uh, we have to show that this g is a linear combination of this. 
So we need, to have, in order to prove this DC linear combination of this, we need to establish the existence of such these uh, scalars. That is the first thing. Okay. For that, we consider our vector space V here, and uh, if we choose uh, n k, what is n k? n k is the uh, null space of f k. Okay. So that is always a subspace of V, and we consider all these functions uh, g f1 etc all this uh, fk minus 1 all these functions up to k minus 1 and not considering fk because uh, we uh, we are going to uh, take the restrictions of this to nk this is nk so th these uh, we consider the restrictions of all these functions uh, uh, to this the subspace nk uh, these are uh, respectively uh, denoted by g prime, f1 prime, etc., fk prime. For the time being, we can we denote this uh, restrictions as uh, this respectively. Now, uh, now, now we have only k minus one functions anyway. Uh, we are considering. Uh, you can consider uh, fk uh, restriction of fk to this nk uh, since this nk is a uh, uh, null space of fk, then fk uh, coincides with uh, the zero uh, functional in this subspace. So that is that doesn't make any sense. Uh, before that, uh, we consider the, these uh, restrictions. In these restrictions, we consider k minus one linear functionals f1, f2, k minus one along with this g. First of all, we uh, use the uh, induction hypothesis. We have assumed that the result is true for uh, k, uh, k minus 1, uh, r is equal to 1 to the rest of k minus 1. Then what is p of k minus 1? p of k minus 1 states that uh, whenever n1 intersection, n2 intersection, etc., n k minus 1, uh, this is n k minus 1 contained in n, uh, uh, contained in some uh, null space, then uh, you can consider the, uh, the linear functionals corresponds corresponding to these null spaces as a, uh, a linear combination of these uh, linear functions as the uh, linear function corresponding to this n. So when you consider this, uh, first we uh, check whether this n1 uh, prime intersection, n2 prime intersection, etc. intersection n k minus 1 prime. Uh, this uh, n i primes denote the null spaces of this uh, f1 prime, f2 prime, etc. f k minus 1. Anyway, all these uh, n1 prime, n2 prime, n k prime, n k minus 1 primes are the subspace of n k because the, the domains of these functions uh, are nothing but this n k. So when you consider this, uh, and you uh, you can easily write this is uh, contained in n k. You can easily write because all, all these uh, contained in NK. Uh, then uh, we have from this you can write this uh, implies uh, N1 prime intersection etc. intersection NK minus 1 prime intersection NK uh, because all, uh, all these uh, the NK prime uh, itself is NK because uh, NK prime is the Null space of fk prime, fk prime, the fk prime is a zero functional in, in nk, then uh, the null space coincides with this. So this is contained in n using this uh, this assumption. Uh, we need to prove the result by assuming uh, this n1 uh, n1 intersection etc. nk, uh, this intersection is contained in n. So uh, we have already assumed that this is true. Assume this then uh, from this you can write since this intersection is contained in nk then this intersection is contained in n using uh, this assumption now uh, we have uh, 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 from this you can write uh, this n uh, n1 prime uh, intersection etc intersection nk prime is contained in uh, n Okay, uh, now you can write this is a uh, from this you can write this is uh, this is k minus one. Uh, for, uh, 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 from this this part is always this intersection is always contained in this. Then this part this intersection is also uh, contained in this uh, n. 
this is because uh, this is this intersection is contained in NK. Then when you take the uh, intersection of this with uh, NK, uh, you can get this part only. The intersection is this intersection is same as this intersection. Then that is contained in N, and it it, it has only k minus one null spaces. Then you can write uh, this as uh, the uh, this is actually n prime, and you write it as n prime. Then you can write this uh, uh, g prime as a linear combination of this f1, f2, etc. f k minus one because we have, we have used the induction hypothesis. Whenever we have this uh, in, in this intersection contained in this, then you can write the linear functional corresponding to n prime as the uh, scalar multiple of the linear uh, functions corresponding to n1 prime, n2 prime, etc. So we can establish the existence of uh, k minus one scalars in this manner. Okay, so this is f k minus one. Yes. So uh, this is true, uh, or this is identically equal to this on n k because these are the linear the domains of the uh, domains of these linear functionals are nothing but this n k so you can get this uh, equality so using this g uh, this e1 c2 etc c k minus 1 uh, we will show that g is exactly equal to c1 plus c2 plus etc or a linear combination of this so that we define a new functional h as a uh, at, at, uh, using these scalars, so we write it as uh, C, uh, g minus c1 f1 uh, plus etc. c k minus 1 f k minus 1. Okay, so now we have a new linear functional h. This h is defined from v2 f. Okay, and we have uh, fk, consider fk along with this f. Uh, what is the domain of fk? Uh, domain of fk is from uh, this v to f again. Okay, but we know that the null space of the null space of null space of nk null space of fk is nk. Fk is nk. Okay, uh, we will show that this h is a scalar multiple of fk. Okay, to prove. Proof H is equal to some C K F K. Uh, to prove this, we will show that, or we use the uh, previous lemma, uh, lemma discussed in the previous class. Uh, we will show that uh, null space of F K N K is contained in null space of H. Okay. So, in, how to prove this N K is contained in H? We choose an arbitrary element. Uh, alpha from nk. Okay, so from this, uh, if we choose any nk, we have uh, uh, we have this result. G prime is contained in this. So G prime is equal to scalar multiple of this. Then you can write it as G prime of alpha equal to C1 F prime of alpha plus etc. C k minus one uh, F k minus one prime of alpha. But this is equal to 0 because of this. Okay. Now you can say that uh, this uh, g, g prime uh, g prime of alpha uh, minus of this quantity is 0. So this implies uh, this would imply that uh, this would imply that uh, h of alpha equal to 0 because g prime of alpha equal to uh, this uh, g of alpha since alpha belongs to nk because the, the restriction of g to nk is g prime so g prime and g coincides at uh, nk similarly each fi fi i from 1 to the extra k minus 1 fi of alpha is equal to uh, f fi prime of alpha is equal to fi of alpha because of the same reason alpha, the domain of these two functions are the same for i is equal to 1 2 3 etc k minus 1 from the from this that you can write this g prime of alpha as g of alpha then g of alpha is equal to c1 f1 of alpha plus etc c k minus 1 f k minus 1 of alpha that implies h of alpha equal to 0 then we have alpha is an element of n h now we write alpha belongs to n k implies alpha belongs to n h what is the consequence of this n k is contained in n h 
whenever NK is contained in NH, uh, you can get uh, the uh, linear function corresponding to this is a scalar multiple of a linear function corresponding to this one. That means H can be written as some C times the null space the uh, function corresponding to NK. That is CK, so that I, I'll put it, put it as CK, the function the CK, then we can write H is equal to CK FK. So from this statement, you can say that H is equal to CK FK implies what is H? H is G minus this. So that is equal to CK FK, that would imply that G is equal to, uh, I'll write in the uh, summation notation, I equal to 1 to K CI FI. So this proves. Uh, uh, the theorem, theorem 20, uh, whenever we have n1, n2, etc., nk is contained in n, we have that g is a uh, linear combination of f1, f2, etc., fk.